What's going on, guys, and welcome to episode four of the Fallen for Film podcast. If you guys are listening in, you've watched the three previous episodes, and now we're at episode four. And my co-host and I, Colin Williams, are super excited to talk about some new movie news, as well as do some fun movie-related content talking with you guys. And before we get started, Colin, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. We, we talked a little earlier. I know we're both kind of tired. The, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a little crazy, you know. I, I was up yeah. late, uh, watched The Judge last night because uh, that was nice. my underrated pick last week. Yeah, so I watched that uh, late. My girlfriend had not yet seen it. And then I got some big news this morning. I hit 400 subscribers on YouTube. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but, you know. It's something. I, hey, I started, I started my channel in January, so that's not too bad, you know. That's not uh, bad. Yeah, 400 subscribers, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can with that. And um, I got Little Women on Blu-ray. Excited about that. Uh, nice. So I've, I've already seen that movie twice. You know how much I love that movie. I love it a lot more than other people do. But um, So I am to answer your question, I am doing good. I am just tired, and uh, I know you are as well. We were talking earlier. Yeah, I also uh, bought uh, Little Women. It hasn't come yet. But, yeah, I also really like the film. Um, I'm doing good as well, tired, you know, I've been working every single day, working in produce at a grocery store, you know, people need their food, their toilet paper, all that uh, stuff, and my only day off this week is Tuesday, so I'm looking forward to that, and yeah, I'm excited still to talk about movies. I was going to ask, have you, are you familiar with uh, TikTok at all? Do you like watch much TikTok? Uh, I uh, don't watch TikTok, but my brother so, does. So my, my, my girlfriend got me into it, and there was this really funny uh, uh, video about this guy, and he, like, uh, ordered a pizza, and then the guy paid with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like well, each roll of to- yeah, each roll of toilet paper was worth ten dollars. He's like, all right, so that's ten, that's twenty, that's thirty. And he's like, hey man, what about my tip? And he's like, nah man, like times are tough out here. And his girlfriend's like, all right, come on, give him a tip. And then they got out some hand sanitizer and like pu- push, gave him some hand sanitizer to like rub in his hands. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's like so it's so funny. Like just you know. Yeah. Working at a, 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 I've never, a, well, eh, kind of. I worked at Target for like literally like two weeks, and I was in the deli, and I hated it. So um, I've never really worked a whole lot of like retail in general. I was, uh, did um, obviously like restaurants and stuff, and then I became a teacher, and now I'm in education, and I love it. But uh, yeah, so I, I couldn't imagine what, especially with what's going on, like how that is to be a worker there, and you know. You're in a, what do they call it? Um, an essential employee. So congratulations, Ryan. I'm a hero. I'm just... Ryan, is, Ryan is an essential employee, guys. <laughs> yep, there's the episode title. Uh, the episode I, title. No, you said something with toilet paper. I was like, toilet paper tastes better than pizza <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> but... But still, uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, Colin and I, we love to come up with episode titles during this podcast, so we don't know what the episode title is going to be, but look forward to that. But anyway, guys, if you're tuning on in here on YouTube and you're wondering what other platforms this podcast is on, well, you can go check us out on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. As it's on there, you can go check us out, follow us, and be sure to rate us as well. We would love for you guys to give us a 10 out of 10. So go on to Spotify, rate us, and go check us out on there if you don't have time to watch us. iTunes as well. iTunes, you can can rate. Stars. Stars? Yeah. Uh, We'd appreciate it, guys, if you give us the highest star possible, whatever. And and so, yeah, we would love the support. So now, Colin, uh, let's get right into the movie news. There's not a lot of a lot of movie news to talk about today so this is for sure going to be a shorter episode but still we'll give you guys our thoughts on this and let's get right into it with the first topic it is a trailer for the upcoming netflix film that's coming out this month later in april and that is for chris hemsworth's new action film extraction colin did you watch the trailer for this yeah, I did, and it, like, okay, so I saw some clips online, like, on Instagram and stuff, and I had heard it was coming out, and I was like, yeah, whatever, it kind of just sounds like a run-of-the-mill uh, action movie with Thor, who's apparently lost a bunch of weight now, so congrats yeah. to 
But yeah, congrats to him there. He he finally worked out with uh, Star Lord, uh, you know, doing some bench presses and stuff. But anyway, um, and I watched the trailer expecting virtually nothing, and I gotta say it looks pretty dope. <laughs> it looks <laughs> it pretty does. sweet. It looked so. I, I watched it with my girlfriend. We were both like, oh, "This looks pretty good." It reminded uh, she brought it up, but it reminded me of um, uh, Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. Because it's like the in the trailer you see it's like Chris Hemsworth character kind of taking care of like this younger boy and like kind of like a rescue mission type thing, and um, there's even a line in the trailer where the guy said you'd be doing the guy it was a uh, uh, Stranger Things guy what's his name David Harbor yeah David Harbor, yeah. Yeah, David Harbor the- says you'd be yeah yeah David Harbor said uh, you'd be doing this kid a lot of favor you just put a bullet in his head I don't know what that means but I mean they wanted to kill Baby Yoda so I could see the yeah, parallels Taiko Atiti yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I could see the parallels between that. So that that was kind of cool, and it, I liked how like a lot of the sh- takes seemed like they were long takes, like they were like all in one take. Um, and some of the action scenes, which is really cool. So it looks like they put a lot of money in this film. It seems like uh, there's passion behind the project. I could be completely wrong when we see the film. It could just be a great uh, trailer, great marketing. <laughs> um, so yeah, dude, it looked. It honestly like I'm kind of shocked. It looked kind of kind of dope, honestly. Hopefully it could be like Triple Frontier. I don't know if you saw that on Netflix with Oscar Isaac, Ben Affleck, Pedro Pascal, and Charlie Hunnam. But that was like a group uh, heist action film, even though this isn't a group action film. But Hemsworth in that film looks like Aquaman mixed with uh, Logan Marshall Green and Upgrade. And just how the fight scenes were and when he's just... And the opening of the trailer, he jumps in the water and he's sitting crisscross applesauce. And it just seems like a really cool take, kind of like the Mandalorian vibes like you were saying. And I don't know. It could either be really cool and awesome or it could be awful. We just don't know. But I'm interested to see this film because we're not getting any new releases for a while. And Colin, I saw Trolls World Tour. I need some help here. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I saw your. I watched your review. I don't know if it was this morning or last night. I did watch your review though. Um. I think your C rating, man. I was kind of surprised. Thought you were gonna be a little harsher on it, but I think you realized it was a kid yeah. movie. So yeah, um, it's, it's you're it. definitely not the target audience, and we're yeah, we're definitely not the target audience. And um, you're a brave soul for watching that film because um, a lot of the times like these movie reviewers on YouTube like bless their heart and uh uh. A lot of them like they'll see like everything because they want they're they're good YouTubers and they want to bring out as much content as possible for the channel. I'm not <laughs> that way. If I don't want to see something, I won't. <laughs> like uh, mm-hmm. like those a lot of the horror movies that came out earlier this year, like The Grudge and uh, That's Tell what Me gets out, the oh, Views, the man. The bad. Uh, the the uh, Grudge. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's what, what gets the, one? the views, grudge and then the turning, or... the grudge, the yeah, turning. Dude, I don't know. Um, the invisible man was obviously good, but like there were some man, earlier yeah. films this year, and I just skipped it because I'm like, I'm not gonna, I have no thoughts on those movies, whether I, I see did, them or not. Yeah. I just, I so I, I, I don't know, I, I'm not those gonna do it, but anyway, we're gonna off topic a little views, bit, but. but anyway, um. So that's our thoughts on the upcoming Netflix film Extraction. I'm very interested to see what it's all about. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good. So yeah, our next comes out this month too. So our next piece of movie news is a Sony news, and that is Jumanji 4 is in development according to the director, Jake Kasdan, who did Welcome to the Jungle in the Next Level. And they announced that the sequel coming up is going to be pretty big like many other sequels are. So, Colin, what are your thoughts overall on the newest Jumanji films, and are you excited or not excited for another Jumanji film? Okay, first of all, I got got a question. Because, like, some people say Jumanji 3 or Jumanji 4, because, like, Jumanji, like, like, I I view... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle is the sequel to the 1995 film. So, they're all... Uh, in the same universe. If that okay. Well, I, I, okay. It's I know I knew it was like it's still in the same universe. I know like uh, Welcome to the Jungle was sort of a soft reboot, but it was the the, the key word there soft because it's still in the universe. But I've like for example like the next level I view as Jumanji 
two for the rebooted soft reboot version. So whatever you want to call it, whatever Jumanji three, Jumanji four, the let's just call it the uh, you know Jumanji. Yeah, the next uh, level sequel or whatever. Yeah, the yeah the next level. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever. Um, but as far as the, the I really like the one the original obviously. Um, the next or not the next level. Um, the Welcome to the Jungle. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle. I really enjoyed. Uh, I, it was a big surprise to me. I thought the trailers looked dumb, and I actually saw it a couple times in theaters. I really liked that, and I can't believe it almost made a billion dollars. Like that's insane that's, for Jumanji movie to make it. It's yeah, the highest. Dude, it's it's the highest gross in Sony film. If you didn't know that. Really? Well, what it about made, um? It made over nine hundred million. What even about made Spider Man Far From Home. Even, uh, no, that's a. Uh, do you really kind of, that's more MCU. I don't know. I mean, well, if it's, you can... it's, it, it's, yeah, it's still Sony though. Like it's MCU I mean, produced it, but Sony is its third movie. If you count that, then yeah, I guess far from home, but they said really Jumanji was at the time, the highest it made like 970 or 980 million, almost a billion. Like you said, that's still what, regardless though, that's still insane. That's like the, whether, point. yeah, it's, whether it's the highest or the second highest or the third or whatever, it's insane. But I thought I thought the sequel uh, was the the one the next level was this kind of a step back. Um, I think because the movie made so much money, the first one or the second one, uh, the 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 Welcome to the Jungle made such so much money. The second one I think had a bigger production budget, and you can see where that money went because I think the action scenes are actually really good in the film. But it just kind of felt like the the first one or the second one all over again. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the, the end of it, though, did le- le- lead itself to a sequel, though. Um, so I'm interested to see how they tie that in. So, Yeah, I'm interested, too. Um, I love uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. I love Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and Karen Gillan as these characters. And will they play different characters again? Hopefully not. They try something new. But, yeah, I'm interested to see what they do. So, anyway, uh, that's our thoughts on j- the new uh, Jumanji sequel coming out. So, now let's go to our next topic here, and this is uh, MCU news. And Thor Love and Thunder News director Taika Waititi has uh, described some uh, major details about Thor Love and Thunder, saying that it will be a fun, campy adventure like he always dreamed of, like a really exciting big film. And he also showed some concept art photos for Thor Love and Thunder all around. Just described a lot of big things to come for Thor Love and Thunder. We obviously know the cast involved. We know Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson's in it. And we know Taika Waititi's coming back as Korg. And Christian Bale's playing the villain. Which that, by the way, that has me excited for this movie. So Colin, are you excited for Thor Love and Thunder? And uh, what are your thoughts on this piece of news dude (laughs) i love taika watiti i love thor ragnarok um actually thor ragnarok is like dude like i just get warm and fuzzy thinking about thor ragnarok i love that movie um and the reason why i kind of do is because the first well i actually like the first thor but the second one is like one of the weaker mc movies and the third one was just such a surprise and it's actually my girlfriend's favorite MCU film, so wow. it has kind of a special, yeah, it has a special place in my heart for sure. Because uh, in, I still love it regardless, but seeing her reaction in the theater, like laughing so much in that movie, just like made you know, like made me love it even more. So I still, it has a really special place in my heart. So obviously, the obvious choice is for him to direct a Thor four if that was ever gonna come out. Then they announce it. We're like, oh, is the Guardians gonna be it in, or is he gonna be in the Guardians of the Galaxy? And then. Then the Christian Bale is gonna be uh, the villain, and then it has like the, the dopest name ever, Love and Thunder. Like, come on, like that is the <laughs> yeah. coolest name for a superhero movie, Thor: Love and Thunder. I have no yeah. idea what it means, but I know I want to see it. And dude, dude, and Natalie like, yeah, yeah eh, I mean that news. I that's like the, the only helpful. thing that's like. I mean, I like Natalie Portman, but I don't think she was all the, the whole chemistry. I mean, that's a cr- common critique in the films that their chemistry doesn't really work. And then also, I'm not a fan of the whole female Thor thing. Like, I don't. I'm not a fan of like she could just be. Can she just be a different? Like, I don't. 
like Thor is Thor. Like <laughs> there's no such thing as a female Thor. Like, I mean, to me, there isn't, there might be in the comic book. So, I mean, there is in the comic books. I know there's like a really good uh, storyline that people say that, Oh, you got to read this is really good. I don't, to be honest, I don't really care. Like I, I, to me, like I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for that kind of thing. It's like, dude, like no Thor is Thor. Please play by Chris Hemsworth. Not a fan of like a female Thor. If she wants to be a super powered woman that has, Thor like powers and we can call her something else. That's cool. But besides that though, um, Taika Waititi did, uh, uh, he did say, I heard a quote from him saying that, um, uh, that, that this is going to be like a, a 10 year old's wish list for a movie. And we just said a yes to everything. Mm-hmm. Colin passes on N- Natalie Portman right there. That's interesting. That's our episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colin's not in on female Thor. That's the episode title. Um, <laughs> but overall, um, I'm also really excited for Thor: Love and Thunder. Who's not? It's an MCU film. I also really love Thor: Ragnarok as well. That was a very different film. And whenever you have Taika Waititi as the director, you know you're going to get a different take on whatever he's doing. After he's done things like Jojo Rabbit, like a complete t- twist on Hitler and Nazis into comedic territory. And this this movie sounds like it's going to be a really awesome, quirky adventure with Thor once again. We also know that the Guardians are going to be in this film and they're going to be in it briefly. I don't know why people think they're going to be a major character, but I'm I'm just really excited to see what they're doing with Christian Bale as the villain. I don't know who he's playing yet, but it's very exciting because Christian Bale is one of the best actors working today, and I'm just excited to see what they do with this film. Yeah, man, dude, I love Taika Waititi. He's so exciting. It's like when he got uh, uh, like they're like, oh, Lucasfilm has approached him for to do a Star Wars film. I was like, well. Duh! Like that's like should be the oh. top of your list. Like he's like the. You should guy take over the- Lucasfilm or uh, John yeah. Favreau. Yeah. Yeah, John Favreau. Well, I mean, they probably don't know the first thing about running a studio, but as far as uh, some sort of higher up, like especially what John Favreau is doing now with the Mandalorian, he's like the showrunner, uh, giving him kind of a some good authority on like in creative decisions and stuff like that. But dude. And then Te- Taika Waititi directed the man, uh, the last episode of The Mandalorian. That was arguably one of the best episodes. So, dude, I'm so excited for Thor. And we haven't even we just mentioned it in passing. But can we take a moment to just think about how Christian Bale is going to be the villain in it? That is so cool. Batman. Yes. Yeah, he's Batman mm, yeah. versus Thor. Like, who thought we would ever see that? We they, would never they, see that showdown. Huh. Yeah, it is, uh, dude. He's gonna, and he's. I mean, I know how much you love American Psycho. I love that movie, too. And uh, so seeing him be the villain, we know he's fully capable of it. Um, dude, uh, I'm super pumped. Super pumped, super pumped as well. Um, I just I, I just want to see that trailer as soon as possible. But what's going on right now, it obviously was delayed, pushed back to 2022. So we got to wait two years for this film. Dang it. Boo. Oh, so anyway, uh, our next piece of movie news right here is, uh, I'm not really familiar with this franchise, I don't know if you are, Colin, but they recently announced that a reboot is coming for Hellraiser. Uh, Hellraiser is a really uh, well-known horror franchise, so Colin, what's your take on this? Um, <laughs> what is my take? My take is that I don't have a take, Ryan, and I'm, I I regret to inform you that. Um, so my my take is that I've before you sent me this, dude, I had never even heard of it. Um, I looked at looked it up, and the pictures look kind of wacky. I'm not the biggest horror movie fan in general. Like I've never seen like I actually watched a live stream the other day. They have someone asking like, who's your favorite? You know, Je- Freddy or Jason? I'm like, dude, I don't. I've never seen Freddy vs. Jason. I don't watch. I haven't seen the hall. Ho- I haven't seen the Halloween films. I haven't. Uh, um, I have. The, yeah. yeah the, the, like it, all of them. Like like I just. I'm not. I, I'm kind of flirting with the genre as of late, but it's more modern films like The Invisible Man, for example. There's some like other ones that, um, more like kind of like A24 horror films, where it's like, oh, like it's kind of like a twist on the horror genre, not like just jump scares and stuff. So any like popular like horror franchise, you know, I'm just eh, the ones that people are like, oh, I, you know, the the like the um, what's the one that's really popular? Um, the uh, Chucky, all those. Chucky. I, I don't watch. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I don't watch any of those. Insidious. Um, so, I, I mean, uh, the people that I'm glad we were able to not really break the news, but to, for people that don't know and that like this franchise, I'm sure by now you probably already know. But um, it's exciting for them, I'm sure. And um, I'm happy we we're able to talk about it. But as far as excitement or intrigue, it's basically zero, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I've heard some rumors of this reboot coming from many different of my uh, YouTube um, horror uh, YouTubers there, like Drum Dums and Cody Leach. I don't know if you watch them. but they're yeah, from- Cody Leach is a big horror guy. Yeah, he's the big horror guy. That's why I ho- wish we had those guys on here. They could talk more about this project. But yeah, I've never seen the Hellraiser movies either. But this seemed like something big for like the horror movie genre. And that fans, maybe they could be excited for a Hellraiser reboot or not. Since it's part of the Hollywood trend just to reboot iconic horror franchises. We'll have to get Cody on at some point. He's a good, he's a good guy. Absolutely. I like his videos. He's yes. on the list. He's on my list. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm very, um, I have no thoughts overall on this, but just it's another uh, franchise getting rebooted. So we don't know anything about it. So I'll have to watch the other films, see what it's all about, what the hype's all about. I'm have so- you, um, this is a little um, off topic though. Speaking of Cody, have you done a collab with him yet? I have done a collab with him, but not a lot. Like, I've only done, like, one or two with him. Like, that was, like, years ago when I was with Sean Chandler. We just did some. Uh, I feel like matches. you've done a collab with, like, everyone, dude. You've been around for, like, forever. Like, yeah, I, I've only done, like, two collabs with him, like, Masters of Movie Trivia and something, The Mummy on my channel when that came out in 2017. Uh, we did something, like, a spoiler talk, I think, but that's all I but yeah, for sure we should get on Cody Leach for this podcast. Yeah. For sure, we need sure. a lot of people. Dude. We're, we got we got we got big ideas coming, dude. We're, we're, <laughs> we, yeah, the ideas are coming, guys. We think every single day, but um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yes, we're just rambling on because we have nothing to say about Hellraiser. Yeah. Do you guys have yeah. anything to say about it? <laughs> yeah, just shoot. I'm in the comments. Shoot like, your stuff it. down below. Let us tell us how stupid we are in the comments on YouTube. Whatever you want. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I think Ryan just. Uh, I thought he uh, misspelled uh, Hellboy. I was like, another reboot. No. <laughs> Hellboy is another reboot. That That's other David, David Harbour. Harbour. <laughs> that was awful. But anyway, uh, we're rambling on. Let's go to the next topic here. Maybe we can have something to say about this. Um, Ridley Scott. Do you love Ridley Scott as a director? Uh, um, you, I probably haven't seen everything he's done. Off, I mean, he's done a lot of films. Um, but the you know the one that comes to mind that I really enjoy is uh, The Martian. Um, we talked about that last time. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a really... Um, I mean, he definitely has some some hits and misses for sure, but overall a fairly uh, prestigious director. And um, so I, I think he's a director that when you see his work, then he's coming out with a new project. You definitely want to keep your eye on it um, because I know it's going to probably be something interesting. Yeah, so MGM, a really well-known studio, does the James Bond films. They have acquired Ridley Scott's next directed film called Gucci which is supposedly this gangster film involving this family. And there are um, many high reports that Lady Gaga is in talks to be the lead star of that film. So Lady Gaga, we know you were talking crap about A Star is Born the last episode. Um, So Lady Gaga being rumored to star in a Ridley Scott film, that sounds very exciting to me. So uh, what's your thoughts overall on Lady Gaga? Hey, dude, you know, even even though I was kind of... And by the way, with The Star is Born, I actually liked the movie. I was just saying it was overrated. Um, so, uh, you know, but you know who was good in, in, in The Star is Born? Lady Gaga. Well, actually, everyone was good in the movie, but Lady Gaga was really good in the film. And, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the first time she ever acted in a movie? I mean, I'm sure she's done other works. I think that is. That yeah, was her so... She, movie. so, yeah. so Clearly, that's paying off for her because she's doing a Ridley Scott film, and we were, I was just saying how he's a fairly uh, prestigious act, or director. Mm-hmm. He's you know done a lot of work and stuff like that. So, um, so you know, it's another film by him. Um, I would, 
you know, it, as far as like, it sounds like a funny name though. It's like Gucci. Like it's just a like it's, like it's the brand and stuff like that. So I don't know. It just like seems like I feel like there should be a different name for it. I feel like it's just like kind of an awkward name for a movie. But it sounds like a rap music video. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It sounds like yeah. it sounds like a rapper. I think like like a like, Lil Wayne music video called Gucci. Yeah, yeah. Gucci. And uh, Gucci movie review. I can just see the title for like our videos. Like that just sounds. That just doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't know something about it. Colin, but um, yeah, Colin's very Gucci today. Yeah, yeah. That's another title. Um, dude, man, we're, the, we're new movie news is struggling, man. I, I ain't got much thoughts, man. I'm rambling just to yeah, fill this, this episode is, out. There's just not a lot of uh, things to talk about today. Dude, but there's there's wanna... tough times out here. We got yeah. We, we yeah, we'll just get to know each other. At the bottom of the barrel just to talk about stuff. But anyway, I like to hear myself talk. But anyway, um, there's another piece of uh, news, Colin. Um, maybe uh, you were kind of excited for this one. Uh, the new uh, Dave Batista film called My Spy, which hasn't even come out yet. There's been many gosh trailers that have been playing in the theaters at every theater I go to. But it's going to Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, just like Trolls World Tour and other films. So are you excited for this film? I'm not really. Uh, fun fact: When um the when I first saw this trailer, I was in high school. That's a fact. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just fucking. With you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just messing with you. I totally cursed. But um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, dude. I we've seen so many trailers for this movie. So many, and um, you know, it it looks generic. And um, I will. I probably wouldn't have seen it anyway. You would have though, because you are a better uh, movie reviewer than I am. You see everything. Um, I'm not gonna waste my time and money. Um, but I mean, if it was the only thing going on, especially with you, like I probably will watch on Amazon Prime now because it's coming out. Like uh, even Lovebirds is coming out on Netflix too. So that's a new release that got moved to streaming that I'm. I will check out. Obviously, I didn't check out uh, Trolls World Tour, but. Um, Dave Batista, I actually really respect him as an actor as far as his work ethic. I think he knows he's not like the most talented actor in the world, and he said that in multiple occasions. But he's like everything he's in, and obviously we know him from Guardians of the Galaxy, and then he was in Stuber. He gives it his all, Blade man. Runner. Gets, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Blade oh, dude, I forgot about Blade Runner. Spectre, oh, dude. <laughs> Spectre, yeah. dude, he's and he, he's he's uh. He he just puts in a lot of work. He tries really hard. He's a former wrestler, obviously. I think he's gonna be in so, Dune too as well. I don't know. Yeah, dude. Oh my god, Dune looks so good. Oh, oh yes. Looks... I cannot believe I missed that on my. I for some re- dumb reason I didn't put it in my most anticipated. Wow. List. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I just kind of cool. forgot about it, and I like, and then I'm like, and then like after I was like, wait, why did I forget about Dune? Like I was like, I don't know what was going on that day, but uh, anyway. Yeah, but Dave Bautista, cool guy. I liked him. I like him as an actor, but um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm, are you excited for it? I, I, I'm not really. That After, I'm not at all. Just seeing this trailer every time just makes me not ex- as excited for it as I once was. Um, Dave Bautista, whenever he does like comedies like this, I'm always interested in it. And I actually really like Stuber. I think that's actually a really funny film. And him, whenever he just takes on action films like Guardians of the Galaxy, Blade Runner, Inspector, and he he knows how to do action and comedy. And it seems like My Spy will do just that. And it's just a trailer. We haven't seen the movie yet. It'll be coming on Amazon Prime, which is definitely fine. It's a not a theater movie for me. I'll definitely watch this at home, get a review out, and it... Nothing really else much else to say. I will, I will say, though, I will say I'll plug something real fast while we're doing this. Speaking of Amazon Prime, I do have a video coming out. I should, probably should film it after this, but um, I'm doing a top 10 most anticipated uh, – not. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said most anticipated. I think we are talking about most anticipated movies of this yeah. year. Uh, top 10 things to watch on uh, Amazon while quarantine as well as Disney+. Plus. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm doing that, and my spy will definitely not be on the list. But, uh, <laughs> Trolls uh, World Tour being on there. <laughs> no, 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 not Trolls World Tour. No. There's some other movies. There's actually some good movies on Amazon Prime. There's, dude, they have like so many freaking Marvel movies. Like, how do they have the rights to that still? Because of Disney Plus. 
I guess they're probably the contract doesn't run out yet. I yeah. Guess. Yeah, the contracts are still there. They're still there. But anyway, that's our quick take on uh, my spy. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that movie anymore. We'll see how it is. But anyway, this is very exciting news right here. I was actually excited to hear this news. Another sequel announcement, Atomic Blonde, is getting a sequel. It has been confirmed. And now I know you told me you haven't seen the first Atomic Blonde film, and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're into action films. And so, what's your quick take on it? Um, first of all, I, I, I just looked it up not too long ago because I was interested. I was like, did it even do all that well financially? Because it's like, I just don't think, I feel like it didn't, but I was kind of wrong. I had a budget of 30 million. Let's say they put another 30 million in marketing and then it made a hundred. So you're thinking they probably made like 30, 40 million on it. That's not bad for, you know, a good little action movie with starring Charlize Theron, Theron. I don't even know how to pronounce her name anymore. Everyone pronounces it differently. Theron. Okay. Some people say Theron. So I'm like, I don't know who, it's like Midsommar and Midsummer. I'm like, what the? Which is it? What's the right? <laughs> I just need to like look up Ari Aster and like like interview and like him say it because I have no idea what it is anymore. But um yeah, so Atomic Blonde, do it looked good. It looked like obviously the um like kind of like a female version of John Wick. Um I don't know is it as good as John Wick or what? No, what do you no, think? No, it's not. No, no. <laughs> Why? No, the story sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That was literally my biggest issue. The action was great. The action was great, but the story sucks. That's it. So I have a question. So did do you how much do you know about Charlize Theron? Uh, and how much stunts did he work did she do on the film? Or was it did she have like a lot of doubles or was she, she kind of like with John Wick? I know. Of, I know she pretty much did a lot of it, but some of like the bigger ones, like a stunt double had to step in. I'm pretty sure it was like Scarlett Johansson stunt double. I'm not sure about that, but mm. for the That's MCU. Cool. But yeah, I think the big stare scene was definitely a stunt double. But I think there was some other fight scenes she did. Okay, was there as good of a, of a scene in Atomic Blonde action scene as there was with John Wick beating up a dude with a book? That staircase fight, though, that was for sure the highlight of the film. Was it as good, though? I still think the book fight is obviously better. Anything in John Wick, sure, is better. The, no, the one the with the mirrors, the mirror one is dope. And two? John Wick 2, that one's dope. The, yeah, I think three had the best fight scenes out of all of them. And then the first one as well. Well, for the for me, like, two, like, a lot of people say that's the weakest one, but that's my favorite because of that mirror. Two's my least action. favorite, yeah. Yeah, I love two. I love two. I love all of them. But I think two all of them have great action scenes. I just think two had the weakest story out of all of them. Yeah, but yeah, uh, as far as Atomic Blonde, you know, it's you know, I I I I guess I'll see it when like the new one comes out. So I'll watch the first one because you know it's 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 definitely it's not like a thing I wanted to avoid or anything. I just kind of missed it. When did it come out? Two thousand eighteen. Seventeen, I think. Seventeen. 2017? Okay. Yeah. So, overall, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with this sequel. Um, could it be a really good sequel? We don't know. Could it be an awful sequel? We'll have to tell. And I'm interested more of Charlize Theron as this character. So, anyway, that's the biggest uh, newest uh, topic that we had to discuss about. And I figure we just go right into it, Colin, with our one of our weekly segments we do every single week. And that is our underrated and overrated pick of the week. And I think I started last time. Did, is that right? Yeah. Uh, dude, it, uh, it is a week no. ago, man. Uh, we're no. tired. You know, we're quarantined. We're tired. We, we don't, don't remember. So, Colin, I think we'll start with your overrated pick this week. All right, man. First of all, I just want to say this is the, my favorite topic to do every single week. It's so fun. I'm always looking yeah. forward to what you picked and stuff. I'm sure you feel the same. And then I think that's going to be like I think we're going to uh, I don't think we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a hard time finding guests in the future because they're going to come on and tell their overrated movie pick and then they're going to get a bunch of hate and they're not going to want to come on the <laughs> podcast anymore. So, <laughs> So, so Durbin last week picked uh, Pulp Fiction, and uh, I'm pretty sure he got a couple unsubscribers. Uh, you yeah, know, sparks so, of flames up in there. Yeah, I'm, I mean, if they subscribed to him, I'm sure they 
maybe no. I don't know if he, I mean, he might be afraid to say it. I mean, I mean, he wasn't afraid to say it here. So maybe we bring out the savageness in people. So um, <laughs> that's another episode title. Um, all right. So uh, first of all, dude, I'm looking through my list. I had to put so many underrated contenders down for like, you know, upcoming episodes, but I can't find a lot of overrated for some reason. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I have a lot of underrated ones because, like, I'm like, oh, dude, that's so underrated, that's so underrated. And then overrated ones, it's like, I guess it depends on how you classify it. But for me, um, I had never seen a – for my overrated pick, I had never seen any James Bond movie ever. And I started with um, the Daniel Craig because at the time we were, it was going to come out in uh, April, the new uh, No Time to Die. So I watched Casino Royale. I got all the Blu-rays for it, like the Daniel Craig collection. And everyone says, I looked at Rotten Tomatoes, it's 90s audience score, 90 on uh, the critics. And then everyone's like, dude, it's like the best James Bond movie. I, it's like the, like, you know, it's like full on far, the, the best Daniel Craig James Bond film, the best James Bond film, period. And I watched it and I was like. some flames. Yeah, <laughs> so I watched it, and I'm like, I watched it, and I'm like, maybe this franchise isn't for me, because I, I was like, if this is the best film in the entire 25 film franchise, then I don't think I'm, either that or just maybe I'll like other movies, hopefully, but I was kind of bored, uh, like in the middle of the film, I thought it had like eight endings by the end of it. Um, like, like I was like, okay, we're about to wrap it up. And I was like, oh, there's freaking 20 more minutes left. I don't, I was not expecting that. And, um, I don't know. I thought the love story could have been, um, handled better. I think there were some weaknesses in the script there. Um, some conveniences as well. I think it was like the whole twist at the end was literally kind of cringeworthy to me. And it's crazy because a lot of people like, like, dude, this movie's so awesome. And the action does work. I think it starts off really strong. The opening like action scene where he's like full on doing parkour and stuff is dope. I think Daniel Craig oh, is an yeah. amazing. Yeah, I think Daniel Craig's an amazing actor. And I actually dig the poker scenes, like kind of like the main gimmick of mm-hmm. the, the the movie. And, yeah. I, and I just felt like it was too long. It had too many endings. So overall, I give it, give it like, you know, three and a half out of five stars. Like, I didn't hate it whatsoever. But pe- just the fact that people say it's the best Bond movie, I'm like, dude, I'm like scared to watch the rest of them now if that's the best they have to offer. Yeah, I definitely disagree. I love Casino Royale. I don't know if that or Skyfall is my favorite so far. We'll have to see when I watch the whole franchise. But still... I get where you're coming from, and maybe uh, too overhyped, too long for me. But I think that film has a perfect three act structure. The first act is this big action film, the second act is this poker game, and the third act is a love story. Yeah, that's and, like kind of the problem for me. It was like two, yeah. three different movies, you know? Yeah, it definitely worked for me. I love the way that film's directed by Martin Campbell. He directed two great James Bond movies, and. Overall, I just love that film. So anyway, my overrated pick, and I'm kind of uh, nitpicky when it comes to my period piece films. Sometimes they could either be really good, okay, or not that great in my personal opinion. And with this one, it was like a, you know, like a major Oscar contender type of film. And it's from a very overrated director in my personal opinion where they just add their own type of styles to the film that may resonate with other people, but just not me. So anyway, I'm off topic, but uh, my overrated pick is the favorite. Mm, okay. The, fa- the favorite. Um, this one, this got nominated for a lot of Oscars in particular, and I just watched it on a dime at home at one day since I didn't see it in theaters. It was nowhere near me. And I just thought the film was good not amazing um yorgos lanthimos the director i'm the, not really a what huge else he fan directed? i know he did the lobster and that was one of his other films and i forgot the name of his other one um i'll have to look that up but the lobster wasn't really a huge fan of that one either so i just think his films have styles that connect with other audience members but this one didn't really with me and it's a period piece as well um 
Rachel Weiss was probably my favorite in the film, and Emma Stone was also really good in there as well. Olivia Coleman is the one who upset Lady Gaga and, you know, uh, Glenn Close at the Oscars. I'm like, really? You thought that was the best performance uh, that deserved the Oscar? Um, she was fine in the film, but I just thought there were better performances all around and just wasn't really a fan overall of the comedy, the style that was presented. It has that Yorgos comedy that just didn't really work for me all around. Very bland story, but it's well shot, I guess. So, Dude, yeah, that's so funny great. that you say like period pieces because I thought I was not really a fan of it. And then, like, obviously, we just talked about Little Women, and like, that was my favorite movie last year. And then I recently saw Portrait of a Lady on Fire, and those are both <laughs> period pieces. And dude, I loved both of them so freaking. Dude, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, have you seen that? I haven't yet. I haven't yet. It's probably dude. on demand. <laughs> It's on Hulu, bro. It's so good, dude. It's so I good. Yeah. Yeah. I say I missed the favorite, so I kind of want to check it out because <laughs> I feel like I might like it more than you because, like, I don't know. I just – maybe I'm having a softer spot for for period pieces. I don't know. I know you said you're kind of nitpicky with it. Um, and so mm -hmm. those – there was – they're not films that I thought I could resonate with, and then I just did so much with um, Little Women – and then I did so much with Portrait of Lady and Fire. And then I even did with a couple films I had to watch when I was in college. Because um, I took a couple of film classes in college. Uh, and that was like electives and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it, and so, th yeah, dude. It was Portrait of Lady and Fire is so good. So I'm actually intrigued to see that. So I don't have a take as far as if I agree or not. Um, but I, I, I think I might see that very soon and get back to you. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll see what his opinion is. So anyway, um, what's your underrated pick? Okay, so funny enough, we mentioned a Daniel Craig, or I mentioned a Daniel Craig movie is my um, overrated. Uh, this set, this is another Daniel. It's he's not the star; he's very much the uh, a side character in the mix. But it's a 2017 film, um, and it's so good. And it, it 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 was fairly critically acclaimed. It had like probably like high 70s uh, people seem to like it but i don't think it is near the hit that it deserves to be i think i'm talking about like maybe one of my favorite movies of all time it's logan lucky wow wow Dude, that movie is so good i love logan lucky what do you have you seen it what do you think i i did see it i thought it was good i thought it was good as well dude i love logan lucky and it, to me hot here's my hot take I think, and it was directed by Steven uh, uh, Soderbergh. Soderbergh. Yeah, I think, and he directed, obviously, um, Ocean's Eleven. Um, I think it's better than Ocean's Eleven. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I, I, disagree. I, think Lo I, love... I think Logan, Lo I, I love I... Ocean's Eleven, for sure. I love both. And, and honestly, Steven Soderbergh is kind of like an underrated director, honestly. Um, but I love Ocean's Eleven. But I think Logan Lucky, I just like the whole, you know, robbing like a NASCAR <laughs> race like that's so dope and, and, and we have Channing, yeah and, and I, yeah and i love like the country kind of vibe to it it like just i think it showed like a different side of america that <laughs> with like with like um that's you know how we saw there's another episode title um you know how we saw um with uh how what was that movie it was like a bank robber movie with um owen wilson and freaking um uh, who's Zach Galifianakis? What was that movie called? Zach Galifianakis? Um, and Owen Wilson. And they like were like robbing a bank or something. And it was like a comedy. It was based off of True Story. Oh my goodness. Let me look yeah. it up. Yeah, you have Zach to look that one up. Nakis and Owen Wilson movie. What was that movie called? It was like, it was like a bad movie is what I'm trying to say. Oh, Masterminds. Did you see Masterminds? I did not. I didn't. Okay, so Masterminds was like kind of like it was like country people like getting away with like stealing money, and it was like the way worse version of Logan Lucky, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, and but anyway, Logan Lucky dude, it's like it's got Channing Tatum, it's got Adam Driver. Like Adam Driver is he like not like one of the best actors working today? Yeah, um, it's a fact. He's so good, and he doesn't have, like, an arm. And then they did some cool, like, mythology with, like, the film. It's like, oh, they think they're they're lucky. They're unlucky people. Um, they're an unlucky family. They're a cursed family. And uh, there's a great family dynamic with his daughter 
And dude, it's so good. It's so good. And yeah, that's where he got the knives out accent from. That's where Oh he got yeah, his, yeah. It's dude, dude, I forgot accent, about that. knives out. <laughs> dude, in the yeah. next knives out movie, I just want him to like do a di- completely different accent. Just for like no reason. It's not explained. What if he does his it's still his western accent, southern accent? Well, I mean, I'll be fine with it, but I just I want him to do like like a completely different accent, a like, German like, accent, a British yeah. accent. <laughs> no, I'm thinking like New York accent, like a Boston or something. Well, like, hey, you're yeah, you're from Massachusetts. Do a Boston accent. Actually, and then, yeah, the movie's in Massachusetts. Do a Boston yeah. accent. So do a Boston accent, and then he just it, it's never explained. And like the reason why it's not explained is because we just assume he changes his accent for in, each and every new case. Dude, that'd be I, so funny. I suspect foul play. Yeah, that's okay. That was <laughs> god awful, Boston. Ryan, you're a bad, you're a bad uh, Massachusetts uh, resident. You don't know how to do a good Boston accent. This is the episode title right there. I suspect foul play. Park your fucking car, in Boston Yard. Oh my god, oh, you should be an man, actor. That, that was atrocious. But anyway, um, so that's your underrated pick. Um, anyway, my underrated pick. Speaking of Boston actors, uh, Chris Evans, Captain America. Um, anyway, uh, my underrated pick of his is Gifted. Have you seen Gifted? Yeah, I did. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's my underrated pick. I thought that movie was really good, really sweet. Uh, Chris Evans might give his one of his best performances in that film, even though I think his best performance is either Snowpiercer or Knives Out, in my personal opinion. But um, still, I thought Chris Evans was really great in here as this. Uh, I think he's like an uncle in this film. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he's raising his sister's daughter. Sister, Mackenzie, yeah. Mackenzie, McKenna Grace in here also gives a really great performance. And it's just this coming of age film, this really tough film to watch. That's really true, and it's just really dramatic, really funny, really sweet in here. If you're into realistic films, kind of like, you know, uh, Manchester by the Sea or any other films like that, then I think this film is for you. There's just, there's one scene in here that I know what scene you're probably thinking as well. Oh, tears, just tears. And Mark Webb directed it. Freaking, and freaking Mark, screwed I, over by, by Mark not, uh, by... And he did 500 Days of Summer as well. So if you yeah, did not... He, he, you know, movies like The Gifted, or Gifted, I'm sorry, I just feel like aren't made anymore. Like these sweet, like, I don't know. Mark Webb is like the, the he, he was a perfect director for this film. I definitely don't like it as much as you do. I thought it was like pretty good. But um, dude, it's a really sweet film. I really, I basically virtually, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I saw it when it came out and I haven't watched it since. Um, so if you really enjoyed it, I'm guessing you've seen it multiple times, correct? No, I saw it once. I saw it once. Oh, you saw it? Wow, so it must have left a really good impression on you then. I saw it with my mother. Yes. Nice. She That's a good movie it. to see with your mom. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a really sad but really funny film as well. If you guys have not seen Gifted, definitely go check it out. So that is our underrated and overrated picks of the week, and we're looking forward to next week's episode to see what we picked. All right, so now let's go to our next topic here, Colin, and it is what we do every single week, and that is answering fan-submitted questions. We got a lot of questions last week. We didn't get to all of them, so we're going to answer the rest of those questions here right now in episode four. So, Colin, I figure we just get right into it with these. Yeah, dude, we we don't have a lot to talk about this episode. So, so yeah, we're just going to answer all these questions. <laughs> yeah, please. Let's do it. So our first question comes from my Patrick. Pat, what did what did I just say? Like I said, guys, we're tired. But anyway, <laughs> the first the first question comes from my cousin Patrick Preston, and he asked us, "Who do you think is the biggest douchebag in Hollywood? Athletes, musicians, or fair game?" Mm. Pretty simple question. So Colin, it's a uh, simple question, but that's a hard one. We're gonna have to think on this one. Oh Jeez. my god! Yeah, I, I literally do. I want to stick to actors because okay. that's kind of what we do, or actresses. Um, for some reason, to me, and I don't know why, and I I don't know why he's coming to my run, and it's not even like the right answer because I love him as an actor. 
uh, but the role he played in Iron Man 2, I'm thinking of Sam Rockwell for some Sam reason. Sam Rockwell. It, he was in Trolls World Tour. Yeah, but no, I love Sam Rockwell, and I don't think he's a douchebag, like, at all. So I don't know. That's not a good answer. Um, no. And that's uh, to be, like, like a really big douchebag. Huh? I don't know. There's somebody, like, honestly, is... Oh, you know it, what comes to mind is... Uh, um, uh, I got did you, one. Did you, ever show, did you ever see the show Entourage? No. Well, the no. guy in there, the guy that plays Ari Gold, um, can't remember his name off the top of my head, but the guy that played Ari Gold, apparently he's kind of a, like, he's he doesn't tip when he goes out to eat. He gives people, like, signed, like, autographs for as a tip, and, like, so I maybe him. I don't know. No. Uh, Antonio Brown's a big douchebag. Oh, yeah, dude. That's a great pick. He's a, he sucks, dude. He sucks. He's sucks. awful. I know. Like, like <laughs> what a, a, you hate on... Yeah, you join my team, the Patriots, and you insult Mr. Kraft, you're a douchebag. Hey, he, he scored one touchdown, and it was against my Dolphins, by the way. Uh, so, yeah. you know. So, yeah, uh, he's a douchebag. But anyway, that's my douchebag. Um, anyway, I think we should just go to this next question here, Colin. And it's a very simple one from Eli Taylor Reviews on Twitter. Oh, I love that kid. He's a great kid. Great kid. Um, he said, what's your favorite coming of age film? Pretty self-explanatory. Colin, you got any picks? Colin has been stumped. Okay, I can hear you. I'm back on. I knew it was. <laughs> I knew it was all messed up. Okay, what was the question? He said, uh, what's your favorite coming of age film? Pretty simple. Oh, 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 easy, easy. The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Nice. nice. Dude, I love that movie. It just went on Netflix. That was on, uh, spoiler alert, yeah. that was one of my yeah. top ten things you should watch on Netflix while quarantine. Dude, it's going to make you cry. Don't get me wrong. You're going to cry. You're going to feel sad, very, very sad. But then you're going to feel so happy. It hits on all the emotions. It's got a great cast. I mean, it's got... Logan Lerman, it's got the best choker of all time, Ezra Miller. Um, uh, <laughs> then Emma, Emma Watson. Um, so it, I don't know, dude. It's it's uh, such a, a, like I like get emotional thinking about it. It was, it was the a, a a movie that absolutely changed my life because I was I I don't know what I was younger when I read the book, and then I was obviously younger when I uh, saw the movie. It came out like almost a decade ago, and it, it completely changed the way I thought about everything. So it, it's it, I wouldn't be the person I am today without that movie. Awesome. Great awesome pick. I also really like the perks of being a wallflower as well. So that's a really good choice. Uh, my favorite coming-of-age film is for sure Stand By Me. Stand By Me, just I watched that movie so many times. One of my favorite Stephen King adaptations about these kids going to search for a dead body as well as coming of age. It's just a great film, great acting, uh, great performances from the young kids in there. River Phoenix was incredible in there. R.I.P., you know, man, R.I.P. Joaquin Phoenix's brother, rest in peace. Um, just Dude, that's full, such a good movie. I love I love. It's it, so great. I love watching it every single year and just quoting it and watching these kids grow and just as friends and just deal and overcoming things along the way. It's just such an iconic film. So great. The guy that directed, um, the guy that directed, uh, um, when Harry met Sally directed that. And then a few good men, uh, what was that guy's Robert? What was that? Do you know who directed to stand by me? Get off the uh, top of your head. Rob Reiner. Yeah. Um, Rob Reiner. Yeah. Rob Reiner. Rob yeah. Reiner. Yeah. Yeah. He did so good in that movie. He's a, he's such a good director. Actually. He's kind of underrated director. He also did misery as well. Mm. Another Stephen King adaptation. Yeah, that's the only that's the only Stephen King adaptation that won an Oscar. Yep, Kathy Bates, great performance, yeah. and she got nominated for Richard Jewell as well, which was a shocker last year. That was a shocker. Yeah, that was a shocker. <laughs> I can't I can't remember. Oh, J Lo, J Lo didn't get nominated, but anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> no, Adam Sandler not getting nominated. That's my beef, bro. That's I still beef. have beef on that. And Willem Dafoe. But anyway, uh, let's go to the next question here, Colin. And 
It's from Metal Land Fan 2004 on YouTube community page. What's your favorite independent film? So I think he's saying, what's your favorite indie film? Mm, that's a good question too. Um, probably uh, um, Reservoir Dogs, maybe. Reservoir Dogs. I think that's a good pick. I mean, there's probably one I like more than that, as far as or maybe not more, but like less of an obvious pick. Um, but Reservoir Dogs is one that comes to mind. Whiplash for sure. Whiplash. Oh, dude, I haven't seen Whiplash. I don't know why. What? Like, I didn't see that. <laughs> Ryan, you have to yell at me. I just haven't seen it. What? <laughs> dude. Oh. oh, my God. I know you have to see it. I'm going to see it. My my girlfriend and my brother After love After that, that reaction, you definitely need to see Whiplash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Colin is lost. Colin does not like drums. He has not oh, seen yeah. Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, Kyle, Ryan yells at Colin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, Colin, you definitely need to see Whiplash, man. It's one of the best films of the last decade. J.K. Simmons, Oscar winning performance. Miles Teller as this young drummer trying to overcome his potential against the evil J.K. Simmons in there. It's so electrifying. Damien Chazelle directed it. He also did La La Land and First Man. This made him into a well-known filmmaker, and it's just incredible. Incredible from start to finish. I didn't know it was an independent film. I honestly didn't know that. It's an indie. Yes, I saw it actually a few weeks after the Oscars aired, and it was just great. Incredible. Right on, man. Okay, what's the next question? Um, so... Uh, our next question is from NameMaker10 on YouTube Community. He says, what's your favorite comedy movie? Oh, that's easy. Superbad. Superbad is the greatest comedy of all time, in my opinion. In your opinion. All right. Uh, for me, it's Elf. Oh, <gasps> my God. Oh. <laughs> I hate that pick. <laughs> oh, you don't like Elf? Uh, no, I, I just feel like that's a wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I just feel like I look at it as like a Christmas movie than a comedy. Yeah, I mean, it is funny. funny. It's oh my funny. god! I love elves. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Um, anyway. Um, what were we? So you like Elf? What did I say again? Uh, oh, super bad, dude. Super bad. Come on, man. Super bad. Yeah. Dude, I watched, and you know what's good about Superbad is it's actually like a really good movie too. It's not just like a good comedy, but it's like actually like a good like movie about like a friendship and stuff. And it's got like the funniest moment in like cinematic history when he the Mick Lovin scene, dude. Like that is the funniest scene like ever. Lovin scene, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think another pick for me would probably be Step Brothers too. I'm a big Will Ferrell fan. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like, I like, yeah. I guess you do like Will. I think that's. Maybe that could be an overrated pick for me. Um, mm. and so I, I mean, it's funny, but it's like I, I've seen it so much to where like, and it's not like like for example, super bad, super relatable to me. Like I can relate to that. I can't relate to being a forty year old man playing Guitar Hero all day, um, and still living <laughs> at my my parents' house. Uh, my you know I have family members who I won't mention by name who can relate to that, but not me. And, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of other ones that come to mind. Uh, twenty, The 21 and 22 Jump Street, I think, are both just as good as the the other yeah. one. I think they're both equally as funny. Um, yeah. There's there's some good com – I mean, comedies are hard to come by because, yeah, you know. Objective. Yeah, um, Yeah, I, the, but I think definitely the, the Super <laughs> Bowl is my favorite. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's go to another great question from uh, Nicholas Lloyd on YouTube. Favorite Martin Scorsese movie? Wow. Um, Wolf of Wall Street. Um, uh, me, it's uh, The Departed. Oh, um, really? I yeah, like the, the Departed a lot, but I, I'm surprised you like that more than The Wolf of Wall Street. That's my second favorite, Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't even. I don't even know if I'd put The Departed it, like it, in the top three. I think Taxi Driver. It, I, uh, like because I'm biased and I'm from Boston. 
Yeah, dude, you're so biased, I'm man. Biased, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Departed is, is actually really good, though. Don't get me wrong; it's a phenomenal movie. Fun. But it's funny. It, it's funny that's the last movie he like. I believe he won an Oscar for The Departed. Uh, that's the last one he won for, or maybe it was the only one he won for best directing. I can't the remember. Only one, the only one for The Departed. That's it. Mm. Yeah. That's shocker. Shocker. That is shock. See, they, yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's it's fantastic. Uh, you guys, I'm sure you have seen the Departed. Dude, guys. Su- Suicide Squad has more Oscars than uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. Fun fact. <laughs> Don't remind me. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the next question, um, it comes from uh, Jacoby Key on YouTube. Most underrated and overrated actor or actress. So I guess he's saying an overrated actor and overrated, I don't know, overrated actor, overrated actress, or uh, what? Overrated, if- overrated actor, I think George Clooney. Um, I think he's overrated. Um, and because, yeah, I don't know. I just, these are good questions, dude. Like, yeah, these are really they're- good questions. They're really uh, I don't know. in there deep. Underrated actor. I think actually Miles Teller is a good one. Maybe Michael B. Jordan. I'm trying to think of oh Timothy Chalamet. Um, I think as far as like younger actors. Uh Timothy Chalamet would probably be my pick because I love him. Um another little women cast member. So of course I'm gonna be biased there. And then um I think overrated uh, for me, uh, Jennifer Lawrence for actresses. Yeah, you said that last week, yeah. Mm-hmm. Overrated actors. Um, damn, that is tough. I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe Reese Witherspoon for overrated for me. Or, I don't know. Um, for, for an actress, Reese Witherspoon Reese maybe. All right. I don't know. Overrated. Uh, John Cusack. I don't know. John Cusack. Why can't I? Why can I not put the face to name right now? Or Kevin John Cusack. Cusack. I don't know. Underrated actors. Um, probably Dan Stevens or Robert Pattinson. Um, oh, Robert Pattinson's a great pick. That's a great pick. Or I'm gonna go with Rob Pattinson. Um, or Willem Dafoe. Um, underrated actress. Um, I'd probably go Florence Pugh. Um, oh, Florence. But she's getting some recognition as of late, though. Um, um, Cersei Ronan, but she's gotten some recognition. Thomaston McKenzie. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy, she's getting recognition now. Um, that, that's a really good question. Um, that's for yeah, sure. That's a really good question. It's a st- it stumped me for sure. I'm kind of I need to think about that one some more. But uh, So my answer is not fully fleshed out for sure. Now, this is a very interesting question from Falcon B on YouTube. Do you guys think an upcoming MCU film could bring Tony Stark back to life? Like a flashback or anything? Mm, flashback, yes. Yeah. Uh, normally, like like authentically, not for a while. Not for a while. I mean, I think they might eventually. Uh, let's see how they do. Let's see how the MCU movies do in the box office, and then we'll talk. If it's they, yeah. they're making less than they, and, they're, and let's just be honest, they're going to make less. Like I'm sorry, Shang Chi and the Ten Rings and the Legend of the Ten Rings isn't going to make as much as, uh, as uh, sure. Avengers Endgame. That's just a fact, and I yeah. can tell you that right now. So when that happens, when Avatar Two comes out, uh, yeah. I don't know. If that, I don't. Then I think we can talk, but no film is going to surpass Endgame. That's well, just yeah. Why. So. The, the, just the fact that 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 that, uh, that movie isn't gonna it would probably do pretty well, but I'm just saying movies like these new. I mean, first of all, the new MCU movies that are coming out with are huge risks. They're very, pa- they got like passion project written all over them. Like very more niche uh, with comic book heroes. A lot of people haven't heard of. A lot of them I probably even haven't heard of. Like Shang Chi, I'd never heard of before. You know, this news came out. So, um. I, I I don't think that they'll bring him back, but at the same time, it's like, we'll see how they do, and then they might have to bring Iron Man back uh, for an encore. Yeah, I, I think they could. And like, like you said, I don't think it won't be for a while, but I think they will. I think they will. 
Um, but thank you guys so much for submitting those questions, whether on YouTube or Twitter. We very much appreciate it. So for the next podcast episode, when we do release, uh, we're about to film the next podcast episode, and you want your questions submitted, be sure to leave it on either Colin and I's YouTube pages or our social media pages, and we'll feature your question in an upcoming podcast. So that's what we do every single week. Those great so questions, that, too. Those were really good questions. We got stumped on some. Yeah, I feel dumb now. <laughs> <laughs> we are dumb. <laughs> um, but anyway, so now let's go to our top five list. Uh, pretty much what I look forward to in the podcast, whether we do this or a game, when we have our next guest, we'll definitely do a game. Um, but since Disney Plus has reached a big milestone, they have now have over 50 million subscribers on the streaming service. And we wanted to celebrate that by giving you guys our top five movies to binge watch on Disney Plus. Since Colin mentioned he has this video coming up on his channel. So his top five is going to get spoiled. But anyway. Well, actually, no, actually it won't. I, uh, uh, I, oh. I did. So in my video, I I listed like more like niche stuff. Because obviously in Disney Plus we have, you know, Marvel. We've got Star Wars. We've got, you know... Uh, a lot of like popular films so i put more niche stuff this time i pretty much just picked the over or i'm sorry the underrated movie for every category so i got like a disney one i got a um a star wars one um a <clears throat> pixar one and uh and then like a original like disney channel original movie so i did some uh some variety for sure all right cool so i think we should get right to your number five all right so my number five is the most underrated Disney animated film, in my opinion, especially in the Renaissance era, maybe not like of all time, because there's probably other ones that take the cake, but the ones where I grew up in, me and you are 90s kids. So um, the, the number five for me is uh, Pocahontas, the most underrated uh, Disney uh, film to me, especially in like the Renaissance area, era when where I grew up on. I know me and you are both 90s kids. So Pocahontas is a film that uh, has a rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes, and I just grew up watching it, and I love it not as much as probably Lion King or Aladdin, but it's very, very close. I probably like it more than like Beauty and the Beast or Tarzan or Mulan. I love Pocahontas, so and, and I'm not spoiling anything because it's not on my uh, most anticipated uh, uh, what you should watch or whatever for um, not in my Disney video I got coming up, but it is such a good movie, and that's in my number five. What's your thoughts on it, Ryan? I like uh, Pocahontas, but to be honest with you, I haven't seen it in a while. Like the last time I saw Pocahontas was when I was like seven or eight, and oh my now, God. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember really liking the film and enjoying the colors of the wind scene. So that's a really good scene. Uh, but there's other Disney films I love more. So I'll obviously need to rewatch it at some point once I do a Renaissance ranking. So I don't have much thoughts on that, but that's a pretty good pick. So my number five. Now for my list, what I did was I picked a lot of, you know, original Disney Plus films and some ones that maybe if people missed out on some of these films, they can go check them out now during the quarantine. Uh, my number five is one of the first films that launched on Disney Plus, and that is Noel. That is the Disney Plus original Christmas film with Anna Kendrick and Bill Hader. And I just really liked this film. I thought it was really sweet, really funny. Uh, Anna Kendrick was basically doing a Buddy the Elf impression in the film. And I thought as a Christmas movie, it did its job. It did what it needed to do. And it's just a fun, you know, a little family Christmas adventure involved. And and it's just full of, you know, Christmas stuff in it. And it kind of put me in a Christmas mood when I first watched it, when it launched on Disney+. Plus. And I thought it was really funny and sweet involved. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out on Disney+. Plus. That's really cool that you put that. I've, I've, I've not heard good things about the movie, actually. So I guess you like it more than most? Yeah. yeah. It was very mixed. I love Anna Kendrick, though. I love Anna Kendrick. I love Anna Kendrick. All right, so on to my number four. And then, so like I said, I went, I kind of went on my, my most underrated for each um, 
kind of category that Disney Plus has to offer. And number four, I've got uh, Rogue One, the uh, Star Wars film. Ooh, nice. Uh, I, 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 I love Rogue One. Yeah, for this is a really funny story. Not really funny, but it's really interesting. So when I first saw Rogue One in theaters, I kind of hated it, honestly. Um, I did not like it like at all. After, after, especially after seeing The Force Awakens the year before, I was like, love The Force Awakens. Gonna brought you know my whole Star Wars geekisms back in me that I was missing for ten years at the time. And I saw Rogue One. And I thought it was kind of just a snooze fest. And then I rewatched it leading up to the Rise of Skywalker, and I don't know what happened in the years that until I watched it again, but I loved it. I I never had a movie do that to me before, where I like borderline like hated it the first time, and then like literally loved it the second time. I don't know what I was on the first time I watched it, but I really enjoyed it. And I think maybe expectations plays a role. Maybe I was just really uh, expecting something great. The, fir- the first time I saw it and then I went in with like lesser expectations the second time but I loved it and to me the final battle is yeah. one of this is uh, to me I think besides The Last Jedi it's the best cinematography in all of Star Wars the beach scenes is where you can see like the ground level and like see like everything from like kind of like it's almost like a World War 2 film from like in Star Wars kind of like that whole vibe to it, like the ground level uh, fight scene on the beach, it was just so good, dude. I loved it. I it's loved my it so second. Much. It's my second favorite Star Wars battle, dude. It's so good, so yeah. freaking good. Yes, but nothing tops the Hoth battle from Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that's great too. But I, I'd actually, no, nah, I, I'd probably still prefer the Hoth battle, but it's close. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's a great pick. I love Rogue One, one of my favorite Star Wars films. I like the more when Return of the Jedi. All oh, right, Return of the Jedi is probably my most overrated uh, um, Star Wars movie, honestly. Mm, mm. All right, so my like, number. Mm. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about it after. We'll talk about it. After. <laughs> yeah. uh, my number four is another Disney Plus original film that released recently. That is Star Girl. Uh, Star Girl is actually a surprise to me. I saw the trailer before I saw the movie. And it just looked really bland to me. But I actually really enjoyed the film more than I thought it would. And, you know, it does have a pretty, you know, typical type of Disney Plus vibe to it. But I thought it was funny. I thought the Stargirl actress was really great. Um, it's fo- it's a comedy of age film as well as a comedy. But it also has a lot of great serious aspects to it that I didn't expect. And I read it does the book have a- when I was in middle school. So, yeah, it, it was actually really good. Yeah. It was really good. Um, I would say my only issue with the film, it's this really weird character. uh, Gus Fring from Breaking Bad is in it. Um, He plays this (laughs) grandfather, uncle character. I don't know what he is, but I felt his scenes were kind of eh in the film. But regardless, I thought the film was really funny, really sweet in there. And good songs, too. Good songs, too. So, well, the uh, the girl that did uh, that won America's Got Talent, uh, she Grace did, Sandoval, yes. she, she was in the she was the lead. But the the guy that you're talking about, Gus Gus Fring, uh, Gus, uh, what's his name, Gustavo Gustavo uh, Gus Fring, whatever you want to call yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, Gus, yeah, Gustavo. Uh, he that I believe in the book, he's just kind of like a father figure, kind of friend to him. Yeah, that's all it really is. Yeah. He was better in the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Breaking Bad. And Better Call Saul. Breaking Bad. And Better Call Saul. But anyway, um, so that's my number four. Uh, what's your number three? Oracle? Number three, yeah. So this okay. is my underrated pick for Pixar. Um, and that's Ratatouille. Dude, Ratatouille is so good. Ratatouille is so good. Let's, let's not fool ourselves. Ratatouille is a freaking masterpiece, okay? Um, actually, I'm going to spoil one pick. Or I'll probably spoil two picks by the end of this for my video I'm doing on the Disney Plus things you should watch on Disney Plus. Um, what I put on there is actually Monsters University because I think Monsters University is really the most underrated Pixar movie because people kind of acted that movie is like one of the weakest Pixar movies and I love Monsters University. Um, a- I hot my hot take of the entire Pixar films is I think Monsters University is better than Monsters Inc. That's my hot take. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so it's my hot take. I love Monsters University. So, um, 
<laughs> yeah, so but, but I couldn't pick that here because I just didn't want to double dip too much. Um, but Ratatouille, uh, it's a film that I think everyone loves, but like nobody talks about as far as Pixar goes. And dude, it's uh, so good. It has the coolest premise, like in like, oh my god, I love Ratatouille. So it's number number three. Yeah. If we talk about overrated Pixar films, that's one of them for me. I'm no! sorry. No. Yep. No. Stop. Yep. Stop. Yep. Stop. No. Um, yep. That's my number. Uh, <laughs> so my. Now let's talk about underrated films. My number three, um, it's a sports film, and it's directed by, I think, the most underrated uh, director working today. That's Gavin O'Connor, and that is Miracle. Yeah, dude, Miracle's dope. Yeah, Miracle. It's on Disney+. Plus. If you guys have not seen Miracle, go watch it. It's from Gavin O'Connor, the guy who did... Got Kurt Russell in it, man. Kurt Russell, <laughs> he did Warrior, The Way Back, like The Accountant. Come on, go see it. It's Kurt really Russell's good. Got a different haircut and everything. He's got like the Bieber hair. It's dope. He's got, it's dope. Go watch it. Uh, it's a hockey movie. I'm not really into hockey that much, but when it's a sports movie that's focusing on something dramatic in a sports film, and I'm always into that type of stuff, like The Way Back and Warrior, and I just. Love it. I think Warrior is still Gavin O'Connor's masterpiece, but this one's really good. <clears throat> right on, man. Let's go. Right, pick. What, what's your number two? What's your number two? All right, the most underrated um, MCU film, and you've got it in your background of your videos, is Captain America: The First Avenger, man. Nice, nice, dude. Captain America: The First Avenger is so frick, dude. Dude, I'm serious. In many aspects, I think it's better than Winter Soldier. I don't think any I disagree with. <laughs> so I love The Winter Soldier. And I think it's probably a better film. Maybe. Um, I'd have to watch both again. Yeah. But it's close, dude. I think I, I I love The Winter Soldier. I probably am not like some people are like, it's the greatest comic book movie of all time. I'm not there. Like I'll probably never be there. But the first adventure gets a little too much hate, I think. And it and I, to me it's a top ten Marvel movie, easily, bar none. Um, I maybe even prefer it over Iron Man, the first Iron Man. I prefer it over a lot of MCU movies that most people would not have the same opinion of. But love the, I mean, to me, still Civil War is the best MCU film, and so therefore it's my favorite Captain America film. But the first of all, the whole trilogy, if you were to watch on Disney Plus, watch the whole freaking Captain America trilogy. I mean, it's so great. We don't talk about, yeah, like we don't talk about, we talk about the Dark Knight trilogy or the Planet of the Apes trilogy, dude. Give me the Captain America trilogy over all of them, honestly. It's so good. Uh, Captain America the First Avenger, that's my pick at number two. I freaking love that movie. Yeah, I also love First Avenger as well. I agree it's the most underrated MCU film. Uh, my number two is uh, Onward. Onward. It's now on Disney+. Plus. Guys, go watch it. Go watch it. Um, I put this here just because, you know... You know, before this whole shenanigans happened, you know, people didn't get a chance to see Onward in the theater. And now's your chance to go see Onward because it's a fantastic Pixar film that talks about two brothers going on a conquest to find their father and bring him back to life. But, of course, it's just his pants. But the film's so much more than that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just his pants. Yeah. <laughs> his pants but it's so much more than that it's about two brothers you know having fun with each other and just finding their father as well and going on this conquest together and i think the film has a lot of great hidden messages to it that just got the tears flowing and it's got chris pratt and tom holland as the voices and it really worked for me some of the comedy was hit or miss but still i really loved onward and look forward to re-watching it again with the family have you not have you only seen it the one time uh, yes i've only yeah, seen I, it I, I almost watched it again and then i just uh, i was on disney plus so i watched finding nemo and the incredibles instead those are my favorite yeah. pixar movies oh great choices uh yeah, toy story talk, too. yeah toy story and toy story 3 are my two favorites Toy Story three is my is at my number three spot. Um, it was at my number one for a while, and then I rewatched Finding Nemo, and I was like, I couldn't stop crying. So I was like, all right, it deserves. Pixar has so change. many great movies. They just change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, except so, Ratatouille, because you hate Ratatouille. Um. I don't hate it. I just don't <laughs> love it. 
I had some issues with it. So what's your number one? Uh, my number one is this is a uh, Disney Channel original film. And like you know, back when we grew up, we watched, I mean, you probably, I could, you know, 13 birthday or 13 years or there was Smart House. There was um, uh, Jump In. There were so many like iconic Disney Channel original movies. High School Musical. The most underrated Disney Channel original movie. It was trending on Twitter the other day. It's actually going to be on my list for what you should watch on Disney+. Plus. So it's kind of another spoiler. But no. Lemonade Mouth, bro. Lemonade Mouth. Lemonade Mouth. I've heard some things about that. Lemon. You You haven't seen it? Nope. Dude, go watch it, bro. It's so Camp Rock. No, <laughs> lemonade, lemonade Mouth is like miles better than Camp Rock and High School Musical. It's so good, dude. It's like actually a good story, like mixed with and some really Scott. awesome original songs. What's that? Scott's in that, right? Now, yeah, dude. Naomi Scott, bro. It's Jasmine. <laughs> yeah, Princess Jasmine's in it, dude. It's so good. Watch Lemonade Mouth. You're sleeping on it. So hard right now. I'm like kind of mad you haven't seen it. How old are you? 23. I'm 20. <laughs> I'm Dude, 20. You're like, so you were probably in like what? I saw seventh jump grade when it came out or something. So you might have been too old to see it, and probably yeah. so was I. But still, yeah. I love it. I still yeah. watch it to this day, dude. I'm a oh, that's grown awesome. ass man. I still watch it. That's awesome. All right, but you know what my number one is? Uh, mine. My number one is Togo. <laughs> Without a doubt. With with uh William Defoe? William Defoe, yeah. Togo is my number one. I actually loved this film. It was a lot better than I expected it to be for sure. It's a dog in a dog thriller with Willem Defoe as the sled sled guy who is uh, you know, sledding the dogs is kinda like called Call of the Wild recently, but better. Yeah, yeah, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah. It's way better than Call of the Wild, and the dogs are actually doing the stunts in the film, which is awesome. And it's just such a great drama. Willem Dafoe gives an underrated performance in there. It's thrilling. It's cold. You feel like you're shivering watching the film since it takes place in the winter time. And it's so thrilling. It's so emotional by the ending. It's so powerful. It's based on a true story. So yeah, have you seen Togo yet, Colin? If you have, dude, I have, I have, I haven't. Um, it didn't really, really interest me. But I, everything I've heard about it, people say it's good. So yeah. and it's it feels very Disney Plus original e if that's even a word. Um, <laughs> but and it probably is. I mean, is it or do you think it's it has really that cinematic good. feel to it? It feels really good. It does have that cinematic feel to it. I'd say. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll put it on my list and I'll maybe check it out. I'm not like I don't really watch a whole lot of movies like that. I, probably, I do love like animal movies. Like I saw the uh, was that one with a dog, a dog's purpose? I actually really like that movie. Oh my uh, gosh! So I actually <laughs> really like the dog's purpose. <laughs> I have such so. a history with these dog movies. But anyway, this is one of the better one for sure. No, Airbud. That's like the go movie. Oh, Airbud's a good one too. Airbud. <laughs> Uh, so that's our top five movies to binge watch on Disney Plus during this quarantine. And as we say, if you haven't seen any of these film or things, definitely go check it out. So now let's go to our next topic, Colin. And that is our, uh, before we close out the show, we do this every single week. And that is our movie quote of the week. Do you want me to kick it off? Go, go for it, man. All right, I will kick it off with... My movie quote of the week, and I think you'll be able to guess what it is right okay. when I say, it. Oh, you think darkness is your ally, but you merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but blinding. That is that was a horrible, that was a horrible Bane impression. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go with the Dark Knight Rises. Bane's quote from the Dark Knight Rises. Easily, that's one of my favorite quotes of all time. Just introducing a scary, intimidating villain from Bane in the Dark Knight Rises. Oh, you want? <laughs> that was good. That was good. Sorry. You should have said it like that, dude. But you would have given it away. <laughs> yeah, I would have given it away. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? I was born in it. You adopted the dark. I was born in it. 
molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man, but then it was me, but blinding. But anyway, that's my quote of the week. Good job. Good job. And let, me see, let me guess what yours is. Yours is from another uh, corporate movie. No. It's not. <laughs> uh, okay, I will give you a hint, though. We did mention the movie today. We have mentioned this movie. We've talked about a lot of movies, but we didn't mention it. But I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So, let's go be psychos together. Do you know what movie that's from? What? Uh, it's Emma Watson as Sam in The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so there's a scene where uh, Charlie had, like, um, Logan Lerman's character uh, had kind of an, uh, an issue with the friend group. And they kind of made up or whatever, and she put his hand or her her arm over his neck and said, "Let's go be psychos together." And it sounds like kind of like a more funny or maybe kind of a weird quote, but it was a really emotional scene, like like "Let's go be friends again." And it was like so many great quotes. Obviously, the big one that everyone talked about is like, "We accept the love we think we deserve." That's like the big quote, um, or "We are infinite." That's another quote that people. But I think this is kind of an underrated quote. From the film, one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Let's go be psychos together. Beautiful, beautiful quote. Beautiful quote. So that does it, guys. That wraps up episode four of the Fallen for Film podcast. Thank you so much for tuning on in and sticking around with us for this 90 minute show. And I want to thank my co host, Colin Williams, as always. And we look forward to uh, next week's episode, episode five. And we are looking to have on another guest. Uh, you'll find out who that is next week. And anyway, Colin, before we wrap up episode four, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, No, man. Just same thing as I always say. Check me out on my YouTube channel. I just passed 400 subscribers, so I got mm-hmm. a tad bit of clout these days. So check me out. Just search my name, Colin Williams, C-O-L-I-N Williams. And then uh, my social media stuff, you know, Colin Williams Reviews on instagram and then colin williams mr on twitter letterbox you can find me c williams 991 that's where you can get my first initial reaction to any movie i ever see whether i rewatch it or watch it for the first time or whatever it is so check me out all the, over there and then rate us on itunes and spotify and like the video on youtube do everything to help us out if you enjoy what we're giving you guys with the podcast Awesome. And do you have any videos coming out this week for the audience to know about? Obviously, yeah. Uh, the Amazon one, I, the uh, what to watch on Amazon while quarantined, what to watch on Disney Plus while quarantined. And then, um, I like I said, I mentioned we, me and Durbin might be doing something together soon. And then me and you need to do a video together soon. We we have a podcast yeah. together, but, we have, <laughs> but we, have, we have never done a video together. So we'll have to think of something. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely uh, think of something for sure. So. Um, but anyway, yes, guys, for my channel coming out, look forward to uh, that top 30 favorite movies of all time video, as well as my ranking for the Game of Thrones seasons, and as well as other videos that I'll be thinking about as well. That's what's coming out on my channel this week. But that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching episode four. As always, go follow us on all the podcast platforms, Spotify, Google Play, and iTunes. That's where you can follow us there. Go rate us. We need your guys' support. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.